Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hello, my name is Adam McIntyre, and I am the high school pastor here at FaithBridge, and I am sitting with Pastor Ken, who just gave an incredible sermon on suffering. Pastor Ken, thank you so much for being here. Sure, thank you. So, uh, I love the sermon, and I have a few questions uh, from it. Do you think that, as Christians, we should expect more suffering mm. because of our call to go out into the world and into the darkness? Sure. Well, yeah, I probably two things come to mind with that question. The first is, if we are living such an insulated, uh, protected life that there seldom is any mm -hmm. suffering, the, the question probably needs to be asked, are we entering into the world enough, as Jesus told us to go into the world? Um, then another thought comes to mind, that being, it would appear in this day and age, uh, you know, as forces against Christianity heighten in other parts of the world and even in our part of the world, uh, there may be some more coming our direction. And so uh, probably good for us to keep that 12th verse in mind. Don't be surprised um, as we go. Yeah, absolutely. And in your sermon, you gave uh, three different observations of the first Peter text that you went through. And in your second observation, uh, it was obedience in that uh, we need to be obedient even in the midst of our suffering. And then you told an incredible story about Leslie and Tim and, and Leslie having to suffer through a very difficult divorce. Um, but as a result of her faithfulness in the midst of that suffering, her father actually saw the gospel come alive in her life. Right. And so my question is, what is it about obedience and faithfulness in the midst of suffering that helps to make the gospel come alive for others to see? Yeah, it, well, it's the winsome witness. It's the authenticity. It, it is the, the, the realization that onlookers have that the pure metal is really what characterizes your life, not the dross. We've seen people who suffer and they just, their life just tanks and there's nothing inspirational about that at all. It's, it's pitiable. Um, but when we see somebody who, who is anchored in their faith, there is a, a genuine uh, winsomeness and authenticity that is contagious and inspiring and draws us towards them. and. And what, what is it? Well, it's all of those things. It's, it's uh, in Philippians, it's the peace that surpasses all understanding. We see, how could you be peaceful? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. It surpasses all understanding, what you're demonstrating. And so I think all of those things rolled in together uh, m make for a very compelling witness. That's great. And kind of a related question, um, do you think that Christians then have actually a responsibility to go out into the world and help alleviate the sufferings of the world? And what, sure. what would that kind of look like? And how would we do that? Yeah, right. sure. Well, so several thoughts come to mind. First of all, the answer, of course, is yes. So how do we do, we do that? First, I think we get more serious about prayer and concentrated prayer times for certain people groups in other parts of the world, in our part of the world, for victims of this or that, um, and going to God in the spiritual realm, praying first of all that there would be darkness pushed back. And then, secondly, we got to roll our sleeves up and go into the, the, get into the action of helping to push the darkness back. I was talking to a guy uh, not very long ago who came back from one of our mission trips that go out from Faith Bridge, of which we have several dozen each year, counting the, the student ministry and the adult teams that go out. And his, in particular, had been a water well digging mission for seven or ten days. 
and he just was going on and on and on and on out the hallway. He just couldn't stop talking about how, just the joy it brought him to see the water come in and just to just to sense that the darkness was being pushed back and, and provision was being brought forth from his being part of the team. And so there's something very powerful about actually saying, I want to step into mission and have a missional life and not just be living a selfish, self-focused sort of life. And then one other thought comes to mind to give credit to, to giving credit to my wife. A lady came up to me right after the sermon was over and gave me a hug and she said, you left out one thing from your sermon. I said, oh, what was it? And she said, well, you have to have a Suzanne Werlein in your life. Now, I knew because of this person, and I knew the pain that she had gone through, and I knew the season she was talking about. And she said, you know, Suzanne, when, I, when my faith was really fragile, and I just wasn't really sure, Suzanne was always there speaking words of reassurance and love and comfort and holding me while I cried. And she would remind me at the right times about passages like the one you preached from today. And so just having, you know, an, an encourager in seasons of suffering is, is priceless. So one of the ways that we can help to apply this is in seasons when we're not uh, when our band th- bandwidth isn't being used up in the suffering, we can move towards those who are and be the shoulder that they can cry on and be the arm that can ho- hold them and help them through uh, you know, a season. So I think that's another very practical way that we can move out and, and help in the realities of suffering in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much again, Ken, for being here with us. And thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.